Welcome to Sachiko Exploring History. I will introduce my favorite Japanese in Best 3 in Dog Hot Spring. I will also introduce beautiful and delicious food and souvenir shops where you can explore great local products. Okay, Dogo's favorite top 3 is... The number 3 is... Oborozukiyo! This inn is a 7 minute walk from the Dogo Hot Spring Station. Being built in 2015, the inn doesn't have long history but its sophisticated atmosphere and delicious meals makes this inn significant. Prawn sashimi was plump and the Seto Inland Sea's specialty tailagai was sweet and elastic with an excellent palate feeling. Here, eat your beef shabu shabu with napa cabbage, shiitake and enoki mushrooms. When eating, you can put grated daikon and chili and chopped green onions into ponzu or sesame sauce. Good with Pinot Noir. And a Japanese inn like Oborozukiyo has many breakfast dishes. Can we finish all of this? We finished all of it. This is the room we stayed. Soft and fluffy bedding. Yay, the massage chair. You can see the nice garden view from the balcony and enjoy a private open air bath inside the room. It's a nice place, but the price is a bit high, usually around 40,000 to 50,000 yen per person. But it's probably a good place for special occasions. Why not? Okay, next. The number two is... Yamato Ya Honten! Which was founded in 1868, is right next to the Dog Hot Springs main building and five minutes walk from the station. Yamato Ya Honten opened its door about 155 years ago in the same year when the Japan's first modern government, Meiji, was established. The inn's founder, Yasujiro Okumura, was a broker for Kozo, Paper Mulberry, and Mitsumata, which were used to make Japanese paper washi. During the Edo period, prior to the Meiji period, free trade around dog hospitals was prohibited, but as the new government lifted the ban, Okumura saw it as an opportunity to expand his business nationwide. On the north side of the Dog Hot Springs main building, he quickly established a four-room wooden inn in order to provide accommodations for his clients. It's said that the name Yamatoya derives from the Yamato province, which is today's Nara prefecture, with which Okumura had a close connection. The lodging business eventually became their main business. In 1944, it was temporarily requisitioned as a naval sanatorium because of the nation's war effort, but it reopened in 1946 and its buildings were also modernized and expanded. Then in 1988, with the opening of the Seto Long Bridge, a large set of bridges connecting the main island Honshu and Shikoku became another turning point in 1996, Yamatoya completely renovated their inn structure by incorporating traditional Japanese architecture. For example, look at Tsukiyazukuri, the architectural style used for a tea ceremony room, and Jurak walls, using fine soil collected solely from around the Nishijin area in Kyoto, and see its gorgeous North Theater, which you can enjoy from the restaurant. Now let's explore the inn's bathing space, which is one of the highlights of this video. Yamatoya Honkan has indoor and open air areas in the men's room, including stone and cypress bathtubs. You can see the women's room here. Unfortunately, the men's and women's baths were not alternating between morning and evening, so we can't enjoy both. Someday, I hope they start alternating. This is an open-air bath for women. Another bathtub is special, being made of one big piece of Oshima stone. Oshima stone, which is found in Iyo Oshima, Imabari city, which is a high-grade white granite. The history of Oshima stone began about 400 years ago, when Todo Takatora built Imabari castle. Takatora appointed a stone masonry master Jiemon 
as one of the leaders. It's said that after the Imabari castle was completed in 1604, an execution order for his team was issued to prevent information leaks because their construction job included building a secret passage as well as the stone walls. Jemon escaped and reached the island, Oshima, where he found high-quality granite, which is said to be the origin of Oshima stone. You can see today's mining area here. Thinking about the history while soaking in the bath is kind of nice. Just outside the bathing rooms, you'll find a bar where you can enjoy sampling sake or plum wine for free, and snack bar, see various flavors of umaibo that boasts a history of more than four decades. After taking a bath, we had dinner. We had tried both Japanese and Western courses, and I liked their Western dinner better. In your orange aperitif, this was so good. Boshut soup, three kinds of breads, seafood, palate cleansing sobe, meat dish, and dessert. In the morning, you can choose a Japanese or Western breakfast. My choice was Japanese because my favorites are hot soup and grilled fish. The price is around 25,000 to 35,000 yen per person with two meals. Although it varies depending on the deal, it's more affordable than another in Oborozukiyo. Okay, number one is... Funaya! This is one of the oldest inns in the dog hospital, which has been doing their business since around 1627, more than 395 years ago. You can find many historical artifacts just by walking around the inn. For example, sources written in the early Meiji period, such as the records of the Dogo Hospital and the guide to famous places in Dogo. High quality pottery from the Ming Dynasty imported to the archipelago, which became a model for Japan's pottery making. And look at these beautiful lacquerware. These are believed to date from the Edo period. This is a Japanese backgammon called Sugoroku, also from the Edo period. The hallways are also decorated with photographs, maps, and charts full of history. These are the Meiji era images of Isaniwa Shrine and Ishiteji Temple, introduced in the episode Rare Power Spots of Dogo Japan. There is also Dogo Hospital's main building that has the deity's hospital, introduced in Japan's fantastic hospital, and the Dogo Hospital Station, too. This is a picture of the red light district, Matsugai Yukaku, built in the early Meiji period. It shows very young girls. In the long history of dog springs, such a fact is not often highlighted, but it was there. And the red light district's past and the spring's higher or cultural past both had a non-negligible impact on dog's prosperity. Instead of trying to erase either one from history, Funaya displays both proudly as part of Dogo history. It seems right at the entrance of the Hogon Temple precinct, the birthplace of famous Buddhist Saint Inten. I couldn't find a picture of Funaya when it was founded in the Edo period, but some maps from that time survived, and we can learn how the Dogo Hospital looked like. There were the first, second, and third bathing rooms in the main building, and there, you can find a big rock called Jade Stone. It's related to the legend of the little but super knowledgeable deity, Sukunam Hikona no Mikoto, who was recovered from deathbed by being soaked in the hot spring. This jade stone is famous because after recovering, the deity started dancing on it, saying, was I sleeping for a bit? If you want to learn more about him, See the episode, Rare Power Spots of Dogo Japan. Next to the main building, there was also a bathing area for oxen and horses. This bathing area existed until much later times, until around the 1950s. So for centuries, the Dogo's hot spring had been helping animals too, to get clean, 
recuperate and relax. As the historical inn, Funae has valuable photos as shown here. This is a picture from the Meiji period. In fact, Funae used to stand just behind the dog hospital's main building. That means in this map from 1902, Funae probably stood here, but later it was moved to the current area, much closer to the Isaniwa Shrine. Here, the map shows Isaniwa Shrine standing in exactly the same location as today, with its numerous stairs. Other power spots, the Hospital Shrine and the Emman Temple were there too. This is Funaya's entrance in 1921, and this is Funaya's entrance in 2023. This is the room at Funaya where Emperor Showa Hirohito stayed around 1921, and this is the room we stayed in 2023. The room is a hybrid combining Japanese and Western styles, so you can enjoy both qualities. The room has a Western style bath, but the inn has a large inside and open air bathing room, which I will show you in this video. The amenities have Funaya's symbol, Crucian Carp, called Funa in Japanese. Oh, what that over there? It seems like a structure with thatched roofs. Funaya has an attractive garden that has a natural river flowing through it. Let's check it out. Wow, nice! With about 200 kinds of plants growing there, you can enjoy different seasonal beauties. It's a soothing space. Especially taking a morning walk gave me a fresh start. Okay, let's explore the inn's large bathtubs. As for women's bathing room, the indoor bathtubs are made of cypress. One large one tub and a small one. There is a sign saying that they use special cypress called ancient cypress or kodai hinoki in Japanese, which is a precious huge tree over 1,000 years old, which grows naturally deep in mountains, more than 2,000 meters above sea level in Taiwan. There's also a sauna. And outside, you can enjoy an open air bath made of rock. <sighs> now I'm curious about the men's baths. There you can find two granite bathtubs. Many parts of them are made of the aforementioned Io Oshima stones. I liked this round one because the bottom of the tub was so smooth and felt great. The type of dog hospital is a simple alkaline hospital. Its gentle, smooth, and mild water quality is said to help many people heal and enhance their beauty. In addition to the granite bath, you can find another one here. So nice to have both kinds of open air bathtubs. Look at the bamboo fence and the petite garden. The outside part of the men's bathroom is more fulfilling. But the good news is, Funaya alternates between the men's and the women's bathing rooms in the morning and evening, so you can enjoy both. Okay, I'm hungry, so let's have the dinner, a traditional multi course banquet meal, kaiseki. First served is a complimentary dish, shellfish called orkshell or akagai, simmered in soy sauce with ginger. Mm. My dad's casual remarks suggest it was pretty good. You can learn your dialect too. The next one is the appetizer. This is rapeseed blossom soaked in Japanese mustard with soybean curd, yuba, and salmon roll. Petit prawn boiled in salt with broccoli, ground sesame seeds, and avocado sauce. The next dish is kirazu, meaning bean curd refuse or okara. Kirazu literally means do not cut in Japanese. This dish is a former Funaya owner's favorite who wished that this inn's good relationships with customers would never be cut. It's paired with half big dried shiitake mushrooms, congar eel, lotus root, and chato, also called as stalk cabbage. 
even this little dish has layers of ingredients and a special message from the owner. The next is a dish served in a bowl, a light kuzu arrowroot soup. The bottom item is scallop shinjo. Shinjo, sometimes pronounced shinjo, is a minced seafood or chicken meat cake cooked with egg white and yam, usually steamed or fried, which has a nice fluffy texture. The next dish is sashimi. <laughs> Japanese food is often said not only to taste, but also to eat with your eyes, so elaborate beauty is important. <laughs> <laughs> to the far left is a parrot fish. I'd say just the right amount of umami and the sweet aftertaste. Next one is a greater amber jack. It has a crunchy texture and a lighter taste than yellowtail, but also has good umami. My favorite fish. In front of the greater amber jack is shellfish called Night Cry. <laughs> it's said that the name was given because by putting sand into the shell, it was used as a toy for babies who cry at night. I tried it for the first time and it was delicious. Next one is Striped Jack, refined rich taste. Oh my god, I love this fish too. And Lean Tuna. With this fat, it actually has condensed umami and nutrition, containing a lot of protein and iron. This is a Japanese horseradish or wasabi beef, and this is a slice of lime. You can apply them when eating fish soaking in the stock and soy sauce mixture or dashi joyu. We had a red wine at dinner and it had a label with that thatched building. Funaya had a very knowledgeable staff and he explained the history. This building with a thatched roof is actually a gate. Interestingly, this used to be the main entrance, but it's used as a back gate now. Also, do you remember I told you a while ago that Funaya used to stand next to the main dog hospital building and then moved to the current location? Guess what was there before? There was Funaya's detached house, which was one time used as ryote or a high-class Japanese restaurant. Although the details why they changed the location is a bit unclear, I heard that some kind of rezoning caused their move. The next one is Simmer's dish. This arita ware is wonderful, making us excited even before seeing the food. This is the Simmer's seven band grouper mahata from the southern part of Ehime, cooked with shiitake mushroom, carrot, ingen peas, and the Ehime brand taro called Yobijin, being seasoned with ginger jam. Seven band grouper looks ugly, but it's a delicious and variable fish, which is in season now. It contains collagen and having elegant sweetness and plump texture. Mmm, yum! The next one is Dainomono, literally food set out on a stand. The connotation here is, this is the highlight of the meal. There are options, a butter grilled abalone or wagyu steak. The abalone was tender and savory. The steak was a bit too fatty, but it might be because I like lean meat better. The next one is kawaribachi, literally replacement bowl. Kaiseki has a specific order of dishes to serve, and here, instead of a simmered or boiled dish, a steamed dish is served. This is a savory pudding, chawanmushi. It's made with Ehime's locally raised free-range chicken, himekko jidori. Himekko jidori is a cross-breeding of four chicken types to create a unique brand with just the right amount of firmness and deliciousness. The next one is a deep-fried dish. This is Spanish mackerel sawara cooked in a tasta age style, which is flavored with soy sauce and mirin. 
coated with the starch and then deep fried. Sawara contains omega-3 fatty acids such as DHA and EPA that helps lower risk of heart disease. Here, purple sweet potato murasakimo and good-looking fresh ostrich farm kogomi. This is anno sweet potato anno imo, a native potato from Sumatra. It's said that Japanese soldiers who had served there during World War II brought it back to the island, Tanegashima, and became popular. It has rich flavor with moist texture. The last meal item is gohan, rice with soup and pickled items. We are served with a local special, rice with red snapper called taimeshi. Ehime has three different kinds of taimeshi, one is raw fish style, other two are steamed style, either soy sauce flavor or salt flavor. The one served today is salt flavor, a famous product from the Hojo area. And of course, don't forget about the dessert. Especially rainbow kiwi was great, extra sweet and juicy. The price is, with two meals per night, it's around 25,000 to 35,000 yen per person, similar to Yamatoya Honten. So I chose Funaya as number one because the inn has the oldest history, has the Japanese garden, and has knowledgeable staff. And it offers delicious and beautiful dinner and makes men's bath and women's bath alternate. In the next episode, I'll introduce Ehime specialties and lunch spots that I couldn't introduce in this video. Thanks for watching! And please don't forget to subscribe. See you in the future episode.